money itself doesn't have a value, right? Uh, but it's like a blood. So today uh, we have a cancer in our blood system, and uh, this is uh, destroying our economy and society. You're listening to the Corbett Report. Welcome, friends. James Corbett here in the sunny climes of Western Japan in August 2016. It is sunny, so it's Japanese Hat Day today on the Corbett Report. If you're not watching the video version of this interview, you should be, if only for the funky Japanese hats, because I'm not here by myself. I am joined by a real live flesh and blood human being for a change rather than a Skype entity. Today we're talking to Ken Shishido. Ken. Hi, uh, thank you for having me on, uh, James. Uh, it's great to have you on, and it's great to have you on because if you're watching The Corbett Report, I'd like to think it's because you don't just want to hear people talk about problems, you want to hear about solutions. And, well, we're going to talk about one solution in the monetary realm today. We're going to be talking about the subject of this t-shirt. I'm sure many in the audience will recognize the Bitcoin symbol, but let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin and Tokyo and Tokyo Bitcoin. Uh, Ken Shishido is the founder? Of the Tokyo Bitcoin uh, organizer meetup? Organizer for Tokyo Bitcoin uh, meetup group. And uh, I have, um, we just had the 200th meetup, which is the longest uh, streak of meet meetups in the world. And it's a weekly meetup, is weekly that right? Weekly meetup. We, and uh, we originally founded by one and only Roger Veer, Bitcoin evangelist. Uh, he he's based in Tokyo, and uh, was founded July 2011, which is second oldest meetup group after Silicon Valley Group. And second oldest meetup group ever, or Bitcoin meetup group? Uh, sec second oldest Bitcoin meetup group, right? So, what kind of things do you do on a weekly basis? Uh, it's a ca casual gathering. So we will just, um, you know, talk about exchange information about Bitcoin uh, and uh, some of us um, uh, founded Bitcoin companies, um, but basically uh, casual gathering. Well, I will show some of the footage from some of your gatherings on the screen. Some interesting ones involving burlesque dancers, even. It's an interesting group. Um, and I hope I can come out and join you guys sometime when I actually get out of my home city and over to Tokyo. Yeah. Increasingly difficult for a stay-at-home dad. But let's talk a little bit about your story. Why Bitcoin? Okay. Um, how I got Bitcoin goes back to actually around about 2004 and 2005. Um, I was uh, uh, working at a phone company responsible for corporate accounts. And uh, my customers are Lehman Brothers, Goldman Sachs, all that kind of uh, mega financial institutions. Then I was visiting their Tokyo headquarters in premier locations, right? Now, at that time, I started wondering how come this wealth is so uh, flowing into financial uh, institutions like them uh, where they don't actually produce anything they don't create anything and yet uh, their CEO makes like 100 times more than Toyota CEO so I started um, uh, studying about monetary history and uh, following Rod Robert Kiyosaki, Mike Maloney, Jim Rogers, you know, thinking about what money is. Then uh, at the same time, start learning Austrian economics, that kind of things. Then I realized this, um, the, the, the root cause of this craziness in the world is to do with the monetary system. Monetary money itself doesn't have a value, right? Uh, but it's like a blood. So today uh, we have a cancer in our blood system and uh, this is uh, destroying our economy and society. So that kind of uh, background, then I started following uh, um, Trace Mayer, Jeff Berwick. Uh, as some of you know, you, you know that uh, some of the very early Bitcoin adapters come from what we call as gold camp or silver camp, the uh, honest money camp, right? So I started buying some physical gold and 
silver. Then I came to uh, some of us uh, came to learn about I learned about Bitcoin uh, in uh, 2011. Um, then I uh, met Roger Veer. Uh, I think in early 2014, and Roger is traveling around the world by now. By then, so I took over a domestic uh, a group uh, activity uh, from uh, uh, 2014. So, so that that is how I got to into Bitcoin. Ah, but before that, in 2012, I tried to. Uh, run for a lower uh, house uh, 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 congress advocating sounds money um, then representing either district 3 Hiroshima or district 5 Tokyo uh, uh, re representing those areas but then I pitched the sound money importance of sound money to the the, the party leaders the uh, but they didn't get it, so I didn't get the official nomination. So I thought that you know, changing things, making the the world a better place, from politics is not possible, <laughs> right? So rather than that, I uh, Bitcoin is more fun, and uh, there are things that are uh, great things you can do with Bitcoin. Uh, so I started uh, focusing on. Uh, Bitcoin full time now. It's interesting. We all have to go through our political period and then grow up and realize, <laughs> no, it's it's about things we can actually do for ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Bitcoin being an example of that. So, you brought some interesting uh, things to show the audience today right. about monetary history. That's Why don't you talk us through what you've got uh, in your little bag here? Okay. So one example, I carry this uh, to Bitcoin meetups. And uh, I show these silver coins. One is a uh, one dollar silver coin, mm -hmm. and one is a uh, one yen uh, silver coin. They look almost identical. Why is that? <laughs> because it was equal uh, weight and size uh, in early 1900, um, uh, when Japan started uh, trading with the Western powers after Edo period, the Shogun, the Samurai period, um, in order to do the fair trade, um, the currency must be the same, right? I mean, the... A standard weight and measure. Right, standard weight to measure. So, therefore, we made one yen equal to one dollar. Mm. And yeah, I, I imagine there are people in the audience who don't know what a silver dollar looks like or why it was called a silver dollar. But yes, an ounce of silver used to be a dollar and an ounce of silver used to be one yen. Now, today, how much is one ounce of silver worth? Uh, it's around about $20. But uh, this uh, one yen, uh, due to uh, antique value of one yen uh, silver, this is going selling at 8000 uh, yen, which is about eight dollars, so uh, 80, eighty dollars. Right. So if you were holding a one yen in you know a hundred years ago, that would be worth one eight thousandth of what it is today. That's right. So so that's uh, one eight thousandth devaluation of the purchasing power, right? So it's kind of telling. It's very telling, and this is not the only example. You have some other examples of. Pieces of paper. These are actual coins, which actually retain their value even after the devaluation. But there are uh, there are some other things you've got in your bag of goodies. Yeah. So the other thing that your audience could be familiar is this is 1924 $20 gold coin, which is going for at around thousand five hundred dollars today. Then I have uh, uh, early. 1910 yen in gold, uh, which is selling at around about $800 today. Uh, but ten, with 10 yen, uh, it's like 10 cents. You cannot buy anything with 10 yen, but with $800, you can, you can, uh, it, it's a lot more purchasing power than 10 yen. 
So. Yeah, considerably more, yes, yes. So once again, devaluation creates a situation where if you're holding on to these tokens given out by the government and just holding on to them, mm -hmm. they're going to be very worthless in 30, 50, 100 years, whatever the time frame is on that devaluation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, so gold and silver coins are, um, uh, are good investments. Uh, or the, it holds the purchasing power for, for a long, long, long time. But when you look at uh, Bitcoin, uh, Satoshi uh, said, quote, in his introduction of Bitcoin paper, Satoshi said, quote, the central bank must be trusted not to debase the currency, but the history of fiat currency is full of breaches of that trust. So this is uh, end quote. So this is what Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin creator, wrote in his introduction paper. So Bitcoin does have the similar property to silver and gold. Now, something that the audience might not realize is that you are an exceptionally, incredibly rich man, that you have 100 trillion dollars and in fact you brought your 100 trillion dollars to show us today didn't you what, what, what do you mean 100 dollars oh. uh, no 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 uh -huh. the, don't you have a trillion yes, yes. Uh -huh. show us what 100 trillion dollars looks like here it is so this is uh infamous zimbabwe uh, 100 trillion dollar note and uh, I'm sure many of your audience uh, are familiar. And uh, actually, the print quality is pretty good because it's uh, printed by a German factory. <laughs> <laughs> For a hundred trillion dollars, I would expect a pretty nicely printed note. <laughs> but not many people have seen uh, is this $10 Zimbabwe uh, silver coins this is going at like um, you know at least monetary silver value is 20 dollars but the premium would be would, would be much more right. but it keeps its uh, purchasing power yes although it's 10 Zimbabwe dollars right right mm -hmm. right. right which I don't know what that's worth now how much is a hundred trillion dollar note yeah. worth now uh, this this has been completely um, uh, th there is a de denomination so this paper does not have any value at all so so there you go you go from a hundred trillion to nothing just like that well it is basically toilet paper um, and it's not worth the money that it's printed on which mm -hmm. is I mean that's a sign of something so what is the answer to this if we keep getting these tokens these meaningless pieces of paper or tokens from government that are constantly being devalued because governments love to print more and more and more and more until they're worth nothing. What's the answer? Um, well, ultimately, uh, we are seeing hyperinflation in places like Venezuela or other places. Um, but the history of fiat money has uh, all the money, paper money has gone to zero. So it, it is inevitable that you know, the, that our current paper system uh, is, is going to, 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 to end, come to an end. That's right. Every single paper currency ever has gone to zero at some point. It's just a matter of when. And uh, one can envision that happening fairly rapidly given uh, the, the state that we're in today. So how does Bitcoin circumvent this problem? Um, Bitcoin uh, is still um, uh, um, Bitcoin is um, still a development phase, so it is not uh, so easy to securely hold Bitcoin for average investors. But uh, you know, uh, buying some Bitcoins and understand, um, uh, you know, play with it, it would be a, a good start. Uh, then if you are feel comfortable, then maybe you buy a few hundred dollars worth of Bitcoins or a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, whatever you are afford to lose. And uh, that would be the good way to, to, to start. 
I would agree. I mean, you start out with a small amount, so mm-hmm. you figure out how to use it and mm-hmm. what you can use it for, and then you increase from there as you feel comfortable and as you start to learn about it. And I assume when you go to a meetup group like the Tokyo Bitcoin meetup, if you are new, you can start to find out about paper wallets and ways to secure your Bitcoin. Correct. So, um, yeah, opportunities are always in front of us, and it's up to you to, to take your action. And uh, I have come to con- conclude uh, after, all, after all these years that I cannot change anybody, <laughs> only I can change myself. So, um, yeah, just learn uh, a bit more about Bitcoin and uh, you start playing with it. I think that's the point, and I am certainly don't sit here saying this is the answer that everyone must get into and put their entire life savings in it, but I say it is an answer. It is a way forward, and it is something that people can be doing rather than twiddling their thumbs waiting for their paper money to turn into toilet paper. So a lot we could be talking about, a lot more to talk about, and there's a lot happening in Japan on the Bitcoin front, a lot of interesting work and people here, but... Uh, uh, just to, just tell people again um, where they can go to find out more about Tokyo Bitcoin Meetup or Bitcoin in in general. Okay, um, if you are in Tokyo, uh, if you are ha- have the chance to come to Tokyo, uh, search Tokyo Bitcoin Meetup Group, then you will find our weekly meetup on Thursday nights. And how about for you personally? Do you have Twitter or ways people can connect? I, um, if you uh, Ken Shishido at Twitter, and uh, yeah, I don't have a website. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll leave it there. Of course, all the links will be in the show notes, as always, so that you can find out more. And I think we're going to leave it there. The sun is probably going to burn me alive anyway, so uh, we better get out of here before I turn into a pumpkin. That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Links in the show notes. Talk to you again soon. Thank you, James.